it was it was a Tuesday that started out like any other Tuesday. I'm working. It's the morning time. I check Twitter as a break just to see what's happening. Oh, the mayors are having a press conference. Cool. Okay. It's just your standard end of the year press conference with Jerry Depoto, Justin Hollander, and Scott Service, the president of baseball operations, the general manager, and the manager. Fairly normal, normal stuff. I was like, oh, okay, neat. I won't be able to watch it because uh, I'm working, but I'll, you know, I'll see the quotes like I normally do from interviews with Depoto and stuff. I'll see the quotes on Twitter. I'll, I'll react to them, and then I see that they're not having it on TV at all because the MLB playoffs were going on. And I was, I thought, oh, convenient, very convenient that they're not uh, live streaming this on TV because of playoffs happening. And a couple of questions from that one, obviously they did that on purpose, uh, not a coincidence Two, could they have not put that on root sports? I mean, Root Sports wasn't showing a playoff game, and the Mariners own Root Sports. So what prevented them from broadcasting on Root Sports? Like, is there an MLB rule that said they couldn't broadcast this because playoffs were going on? If so, whatever, then fine. Still, they schedule it like that on purpose, obviously. Uh, and then the the quotes just keep coming out. I keep checking Twitter. And for the most part, most of their interview was fairly boilerplate, fairly normal stuff from from an interview. Um, really, really like the whole organization is pretty aligned, especially those three guys. I've talked about this before, and Depoto has has constantly done interviews. He talks to the media and, and like to the radios and to just general, you know, podcasts and, and shows. He talks to the public a lot more than a lot of like president of baseball operations. And so we kind of know his playbook. He says a lot of things without saying a lot of things. And they were pretty good at that during this entire press conference as well. But oh boy. Oh God, why did why did they have to do it? First of all they didn't really seem too torn up that they didn't make the playoffs. And whether or not they are torn up about it, which I'm sure they're mildly upset, but they didn't seem upset at all. And I feel like it's at least so it's it's they got to at least show something that they're a little upset to the fans that they didn't make the playoffs because the goal every year should be to make the playoffs and try to win the World Series. And to come out and say that the year was a success is uh, insane to do and incredibly tone deaf. This in, this entire press conference is down to when they set it up so people couldn't watch it live. Incredibly tone deaf and pandering, patronizing to the entire fan base. Most of their comments w would not have warranted an emergency podcast like this. Because, again, like I said, most of them were saying a lot of things, but not saying really anything at all. Like, they're not going to tell you their off-season plans set in stone. They're not going to openly criticize. Like, they made some comments on what Kyle Raleigh said, and I'll talk about that. But they weren't going to say he was wrong. They weren't going to criticize the players. They weren't going to say, like, it was a downright failure. Because And maybe they probably should have, but they're not going to because that's not their style. They were going to come out. They were going to be very bland, very neutral, very, we're going to build this off season, you know, like similar to what they said last year, but without really promising much is, is kind of what I expected. But then the quote came out. There's a couple that I'm going to focus on, but you know, the quote, you know, the quote that I'm talking about, it mentions a particular number and I'll talk about that in a second. But DePoto started off this press conference by saying, This season, as much as it was disappointing in the end, was a step forward for us. Sustainable roster, competing for championships year in and year out. 
Forward steps for our young players. Our challenge as a front office is to find a way to step forward. I don't disagree with half of that. Um, I think their challenge as a front office is definitely to find a way to step forward from this season and last season. I think the roster is fairly sustainable. I've talked about the young core. I believe in the young core, and all of them took steps this year. And even like the guys who were not quote part of the young core, but the core of the team, like Luis Castillo, J.P. Crawford, great years. Like there's a lot of positives. There's a lot to build on, and I think in in that context, sure, it's definitely a step forward that you had very positive developments from a lot of your players who are going to be on the team for the next five plus years. That is definitely true. But to come out and open this press conference in a year that you promised to build a World Series contender and fans were disappointed with the offseason, you missed the playoffs in the final second to last day of the season. Fans are at an all-time disappointment. They're mad at ownership in front office. And you come out in this press conference... And say, as much as it was disappointing in the end, it was a step forward for us. That is just insulting. Insulting to start the press conference like that. I am standing up recording this. I am standing up where I usually record because I'm hot. I'm hot about this. I felt like standing while doing this because I feel like I'm screaming at the front office. I... And even after that quote, I didn't think it was going to warrant a podcast... But then he said, but then he said the thing, but then he said the thing, the quote that I've seen making the rounds on Twitter to not only the top Twitter accounts on the site, all of Mariners Twitter was talking about this, but then I saw like all of the John Boy guys weighed in. I saw a bunch of other podcasts weigh in. Uh, I think it's been talked about on, on talk shows already surrounding baseball mixed in with postseason talk. And I saw it reaching corners of Twitter that, like, is sports Twitter, but not really baseball-focused. Everyone was commenting on this, because it was an absolutely garbage look. You know what I'm talking about. Jerry DePoto says he operates with a 10-year plan to win 54% of the time. Quote, We're actually doing the fan base a favor in asking for their patience to win the World Series while we continue to build a sustainably good roster end quote what what the fuck dude it was normal tuesday jerry and you had to come and drop this quote on my timeline on everyone's timeline what are you doing you donkey you absolute bellend why would you say that out loud he did the thing where he said the quiet part out loud. And the quiet part is quite lame. I think a lot of front offices think like this. I'll be honest. I think a lot of front offices, especially in this age of analytics and numbers, I think a lot of front offices look at the future and say, we want to win percentage of our games and that's a success for us. Sure. I still think that's kind of a lame way to look at it. But if I'm sure a lot of front offices look at it that way. The fact that he said this, knowing every fan of this team was going to be looking at the quotes of this press conference, he said this to the world, that he said, we're trying to win 54% of our games. If he stopped at that, that even taken from this interview would have caused a ruckus on Mariners Twitter, on baseball Twitter. Because, again, you don't say that out loud to the fans. You keep that internal. Whatever your goals are, you don't go out to the fans and say, yeah, we're trying to win 54% of our games in 10 years. No, absolutely not. Whether or not that is your plan, you say to the fans, we are trying to build a World Series champion. We're trying to win the World Series. That is the end goal. Whether or not it is your true end goal as a front office, that is the end goal you have to express to the fans. At the very least. And if he just stopped at that, again, it still would have been tough. A tough look. Especially coming off this year. Where they should have improved the roster more. 
and heartbreak was happening. And not to mention, this press conference is two days after the heart, the massive heartbreak that happened of getting eliminated on game 161. But then he had to go and say, we're doing the fan base a favor. He's like, no, no, no. Let me tell you why we're better at our jobs than you, than you think we are. Let me tell you why you don't even deserve to be mad at us right now. We're doing you a favor. We're building a roster that's going to be sustainably competitive for 10 years. Over 500 for 10 years. Average. That's, that's we're doing you a favor for doing that. Are you, like, come on. What are you doing, Jerry? To say that to this fan base is asinine it is absolutely deplorable that he said that if any gm said that after a season like this a season of disappointment it would be met with the same ire that this is being met but the fact that he said this as the mariners the seattle mariners president of baseball operations he said to the fans we're doing you a favor, and you have to be patient because we're trying to win 54% of our games for 10 years. The Seattle Mariners. Do the, do the Mariners, do they, um, have they won the World Series? Have they been to the World Series? Do they have a long drought of some kind of being competitive? Like, if there's any fan base that deserves to be more impatient than the rest... It's the fucking Seattle Mariners fan base. And this all comes after a successful year last year. You broke the drought. You won a playoff series. You clearly have built a team that is going to be sustainably competitive because of the young players and core in it. That's great. You go into the offseason and you say, we're going to build a championship roster. You put out a promo video that says win it all in 2023. You promise to be better. You promise to make the playoffs again. You promise to be a World Series contender. You don't spend any money in the offseason. You make some trades that don't work out. You make a trade at the deadline that didn't improve your team as much as you probably wanted to, and you miss the playoffs, and you come out and say, no, fans, shut up, actually. We know what we're doing. Be patient. We're doing you a favor, so don't even get mad. What are you doing, Jerry? All-time bad PR move from a man who I think has been decent at saying nothing in the media and being quite vague. This is an insane misstep. And for a front office that I've defended time and time again, because I do think they've done so much good for this team, this fan base, the organization. I think it's a very well-run organization. But good lord, Jerry, what is this? And there's been there's been inklings of this the past couple of years. Where it seems like, yes, this is a job that he and the rest of the team in the front office is doing for their livelihood. And fans, irrational or rational, just want to win a World Series at all costs. Whereas, you know, maybe to keep his job, he can't really do that. He's got to be sustainable and make money for the owner and the ownership group. Sure. And he's, he's seemed rather insincere the past couple of years about winning. This is an all time low. This, this somewhat confirms kind of their thinking in the front office where they've taken this job and they're very okay with not trying to go for it. They're very okay with being good enough to make a lot of money for themselves and for the front off or for the ownership. I just can't believe he said that. I really can't. And I I don't think I've ever seen the fans this mad. Not just at ownership. Right after the season ended, a lot of people are fired to Poto service, whatever. I've vocally been against that. The, a lot of fans, everyone can kind of unite after this offseason, being angry at the team, but a lot of that anger is like ownership clearly doesn't want to spend money. And we could at least convince ourselves that the front office wants to spend more and ownership just simply won't give them a bigger budget. We can try to convince ourselves of that. I've convinced myself of that. 
But now, with this quote and some other stuff that he said, it's abundantly clear how they think about running this team. He said it, 54% in 10 years. That is a terrible way to run an organization. There's plenty of orgs that probably say they, they do this, but wh- why? What are, you, what are you doing here, Jerry? You aim to win 54% and you come short if you aim for 54%. Your goal should be to win a World Series and win as many games of poss- as possible. I think that's what a lot of the great orgs are set out to do. They're probably like, if we end up winning 54% of our games over 10 years, that's a success. But our main goal is to build the best team possible to win a World Series. And if we fall back and win 54%, okay, that's not that bad. 54% should not be the benchmark. It should not be the goal. It's just upsetting to hear from the front office that's promised so much in the last year. It makes this offseason even more crucial for them. The seat is undoubtedly hotter. I still I it's I still think they're so aligned as a as an organization and ownership that the seat's not super hot. But in terms of fan angst and anger, it's at an all time high right now. It already was after the season ended and then He made these comments, and it's even worse now. It's even worse. I just couldn't believe that quote. I can't believe he said, we're actually doing the fan base a favor in asking for their patience to win the World Series. I just just can't believe the, the gall of Jerry DiPoto to say that to these fans right now crazy. If you said this last off season, not the 54% part, but the patience and f- asking a favor, sure. I'd be okay with it. But after this season and going into this off season, brother, if y'all don't spend some fucking money this off season or make some significant trades to improve the roster, I don't know what the fan base is going to do. Because they, they clearly, 54%, they seem happy to do. And they won around 54% of their games this year and missed the playoffs. So if they're happy to keep doing that, and they don't care about what the fans think, then that sucks. That sucks for all of us as fans. Some other quotes. This one really sent me, but not in a much bad way. It was just hilarious. DePoto said, quote, We put more runners in scoring position than anyone in the American League. Genuinely hilarious to say that because they were also second to last in scoring those runners in the scoring position. Actually just fantastic from Jerry DePoto there to spin zone, not being able to knock runners in. It's like, hey, we put the most runners on in scoring position, all right? Don't ask what happened after that. I That was a funny quote. And then DePoto also stated they will have a higher payroll next year in some capacity, whatever that means. But he, uh, he doesn't believe you buy trophies. He said, quote, it's not a slam dunk. It's not going to come from one area. And then he said they'll build from trade, develop, and free agency, but you don't know which of those three will be leaned on most. I can guess which of those three will be leaned on most. Probably trade. Probably develop. And I really doubt they'll lean on free agency too much. So, really just... Ah, okay. Some more quotes. Uh, and I'm reading from a, a thread from Circling Seattle Sports on Twitter. They were there. A lot of people had these quotes, um, but they just have a good thread that I am running through. Because um, DePoto also said they have a, quote, foundational roster now that's attractive to other players. Then sign players. My answer to that one. Sign players if it's attractive. Because the question was, like, is Seattle unattractive for free agents? Like, is that the reason you haven't brought anyone in? He's like, no, it's actually attractive. You're telling on yourself, Jerry. What are you doing? You were tattling on yourself. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, service said he felt strongly about the leadership on the team. Sure. Topoto said they'll be looking to add uh, players to the roster. That will cut down on the strikeout issues. Uh, they updated some injuries, like Robbie Ray is going to be back, like All Star break next year. Marco and Emerson Hancock are heading towards like spring training to be back. Hopefully, uh, they talked about Cal 
being a leader with the pitching staff and in the clubhouse, and he's a potential extension candidate, which I absolutely agree with. And what else did they say? Oh, he talked about prospects. He says there's a wave coming mid to late season next year. I think that's very valid to say. Uh, seeing how many of their top hitting prospects are in A ball and A plus ball right now, and many of them will bump up to Arkansas next year. And I'm sure a lot of them will make that jump from Arkansas to the bigs, like he says, mid to late next year. I hope, I mean, I see this as they still need to improve the roster with other big league players prior to that, obviously. But I can see them using this as a somewhat excuse for not doing so. The The idea behind that, maybe, is you sign some shorter term contracts. You like you could have this off season. You could have signed a couple of shorter term contracts. Looked at the future of your prospects and been like, "Well, maybe they want. Maybe we'll have them expire soon, and those prospects can take up the mantle." But I don't know. I think probably we'll see Lazaro Montes if he hits like he did last year. Maybe Cole Young, Harry Ford, Gabriel Gonzalez. There's plenty of guys who are, will probably by the middle of next season be ready enough to come up. I just that can't be an excuse for them this off season to not actively try to improve the holes in the roster right now. Um, they also said they've come to a decision if they're going to qualifying offer Tay Oscar. Obviously, we'll, we will know when that deadline happens. I am in the camp they should qualifying offer him. I don't think it's likely he accepts it, but if, if he accepts it, that's good. If he doesn't accept it, let him test out for agency, but I still think they should try to bring him back. He's better than the current alternatives, in my opinion. Um, Any other quotes that I want to run through here besides... I talked about the the big one. Uh, I really... I still really can't believe he said that. No, I'm not going to talk about any other quotes. There weren't other super significant ones in my eyes. Again, a lot of it was, was front office talk, which they're good at except for a couple fuck-ups today. 54% is a number that will burn in my head forever. And I don't think Jerry DePoto and Justin Hollander, for that matter, will ever, or even the Mariners organization as a whole, will ever live down 54% in the baseball world. The jokes will come. The shit will, the shit will hit the fan. 54% will be the number. If they don't make it there, if they make it over... 54% will be remembered. Jared Apoto, you might as well tattoo 54% on your forehead, buddy. Because you're going to be constantly reminded that you said that to every one of these fans and to the broader baseball world. You said the quiet part out loud. You're not supposed to do that, bud. Like, is it too much to ask to have them come out and say, this season was a failure. Our goals were to make the playoffs and contend for a World Series, and we didn't do that, so this season's a failure. And then you could be like, but we did see a lot of positives, like with the young player development and all that, and the pitching. You segue into the positives after saying, we're disappointed. And saying, the end goal, as always, is to build a championship roster. And fans will be mad at that regardless, because obviously, they didn't do enough, and they haven't in the past year to build a championship roster. But that's just what you do. That's what you say. You don't come out and say, we're trying to be just above average for a decade and that's a success in our eyes so fans hey we know more than you we're smarter than you actually um so be patient why don't you like you've been patient these past 20 years to make the playoffs again just crazy shit that he did this and that's it this has been an emergency podcast i appreciate the listen I almost didn't do this, and then, again, that 54% quote came out, and I've been thinking about it. I can't believe how dumb, how patronizing, how insulting that that was to the fan base. And for as much as I've defended stuff they've done for this organization, they're never going to live this press conference down. They never will. And the pressure is on even more now. The fans are at a at a fever pitch of anger 
right now. More than I've ever seen. And for good reason. I am one of those people. I'm still standing up recording this podcast. It's been 25 minutes. I'm just standing, pacing around, recording this because I'm mad. I am very mad. This is a crucial offseason. And if they don't show some gumption that they actually want to build a World Series winning roster, I don't know where it ends with this front office and this team then. Because we know they're clearly fine with the status quo of winning, you know, 90 games flat and not shooting for anything higher. Disappointing, disappointing, but something they can never take away from us is the players that we get to root for and love. They have nothing to do with this. And they still have great players. And this team was still good this year. They came up short. And this offseason is, is, again, I think this is now, especially after this press conference, the most crucial offseason in the last 20 years. Uh, especially the most crucial offseason of the DePoto reign. It's a, it, I don't know if it's a make or break offseason for their jobs, but it's huge to at least show to the fans you were committed to, to winning the World Series at all costs, I guess. I mean, we kind of know, I guess that's not their, their point, but whatever. Disappointing, disappointing. Thanks for listening. If you're listening this far, give a, give a, give a rate review, whatever you want to do. Follow me on Twitter at castball1977. We'll be tweeting off season stuff. Uh, I have a podcast that will be coming out on Monday. It's the minor league team of the year. Very excited to talk about the best and brightest in the Mariners minor league system this season. And just be on the lookout for that and know that I, too, am very angry at the Mariners right now, like everyone else, and we should be. So, again, appreciate the listen, appreciate the uh, the commitment to listening to an emergency pod, but had to get some of that stuff off my chest because I was, I was stewing in anger for 24 hours thinking about what to do about these absolutely insane comments that Jerry DePoto made. So appreciate everyone. Hope you have a good rest of the week. Look out for the pod on Monday and go, you know, I'm not going to say go Mariners because they're not playing. I'm going to say go Phillies, go Phillies, baby. I hope the Phillies win the world series. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.